So how do you track SpaceX Starlink satellites? I'm glad you asked. Let's go find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination. That zing, that bergamot, so good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about the tech of tracking satellites specifically Starlink satellites. A lot of people want to know this, but there's a couple of different apps that are out there or websites that are out there that you can get to for free and do this. Not only track satellites, but also there is now a means to find out how fast your Starlink would be in your specific geographic location. Your location, how fast the upload speed will be, how fast the download speed will be, and what would the latency be if you were to purchase. Starlink today. So all that and much more on today's video. So let's jump right into it. So what exactly is Starlink anyways? Basically Starlink is developed by Elon Musk and SpaceX. It's like a revolutionary approach to internet connectivity. Let's call it that. So instead of a terrestrial type of traditional internet through fiber optics or through cable, this works through low earth orbiting or LEO satellites. And these satellites feed data from your satellite dish up to a satellite and back down. There's a little bit more involved in it, but that's basically how you're getting that connectivity through low earth orbiting satellites. Elon Musk developed this cutting edge technology as a means of bridging the digital divide. I've talked to you guys about this in the past, basically the bridge between the haves and the have nots, the haves of high speed internet broadband access and the have nots, the people that either have no access at all to the internet or people like me that was receiving 15 megabits down and about 1.5 megabits up. Horrible AT&T Uverse or DSL service. Now we have SpaceX Starlink and it is a whole new world. Anyways, the idea here with SpaceX is they deployed about 5,000 satellites so far, and there's about 4,500 of those that are currently operational, once again, in low Earth orbit. Now, they're looking at about 42, 43,000 in totality once this is complete. This mega constellation is complete. And the difference between Elon Musk, Starlink, in comparison to other satellite constellations that are out there that provide internet service is Elon's is sitting in low Earth orbit, or LEO, which is about 550 kilometers off the Earth, whereas the geostationary satellites that you see with HughesNet and Viasat, they're sitting more about six times higher, maybe right around 35 to 36,000 kilometers. A big difference, a big, big difference. So you get lower latency and you get faster speeds with Elon Musk SpaceX. So that's kind of the backstory about it. Now, today we're gonna to take a look at three tools. The first tool is going to be Find Starlink. This is a brand new tool, really excited about this, and you'll see why in just a minute. Also, Starlink.sx, that is something that I've shown you guys guys on live streams many times in the past. I'm going to go through it a little bit for you, especially if you don't know about it. And finally, we're going to take a look at SpaceX Starlink's own website and the modifications that they are now providing that gives us more information. Before we get into this first app, I want to read to you a small snippet from an article that I read last night. And I think it's apropos here because it gives you an understanding of why so many people want to track the Starlink satellites now and even more in the future when there's a lot of them up there. Right now, once again, there's 4,500. There's going to be eventually over 40,000. That's going to be a lot. Anyways, this article states this. Astronomers and scientists have raised serious concerns about the impact of these mega constellations on space observation. With SpaceX's ambitious plans to launch even more satellites, there are fears that these orbiting clusters could interfere with scientific research and our understanding of of the cosmos. One notable concern centers around electromagnetic radiation emitted by Starlink satellites. A recent observation with a low far radio telescope found unintended radiation emanating from these satellites, which in turn interfered with radio astronomy research. 
According to a radio astronomer in Germany, the larger the constellation of satellites, the greater the amount of radio interference, making it harder for astronomical studies from Earth. And I've talked to you guys about this in the past. I do believe that in the future, let's say three, four, five years from now, there's going to be a lot more research done up in 30, 40,000 kilometers above Earth where there is open space and they don't have to worry about this type of radiation that's being emitted by the satellites. They don't have to worry about the satellites actually blocking or leaving little dots in their frames when they're capturing these images. So I think a lot of that scientific research of the cosmos is not going to to be happening terrestrial, it's going to be happening non-terrestrially up in, once again, let's say 40,000 kilometers above Earth. That's my personal opinion. We'll see what happens with that. But at any rate, this first application or the newest application, which is Find Starlink, I think is really cool. And the reason being is not only does it provide you with the best time to see the satellites as they come by at your specific location, but it also gives you the times when they'll be leaving least likely to be seen. This is very powerful because if you are an amateur or a professional astronomer or maybe just simply an astrophotographer that wants to take a picture of the night's starry sky, well knowing when the satellites will not be in your view is a great time to be able to take these long exposure photographs. When you take a long exposure, when you look at the image, you see a bright line going through your image. And then you have to go in there and retouch that out. That's okay if you're just doing it for one image, but now let's say if you're doing it for a hundred images or even more and putting together a massive giga photo, well, it ends up being a problem. And it's a problem for astronomers that are trying to see what's behind that streak. It could be something very important that they're not able to see. So anyways, let's go check out my screen so I can show you this application. So if we go to findstarlink.com, this is what you see there. It's a very basic site, but there is a lot of math, a lot of algorithms going on in the back end here. So right here is where we're going to change this information. It says here that I am located in the United States, but it says that I'm also in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, the reason it says I'm in Atlanta, Georgia is because it cross-referenced my pop or my point of presence, and it is in Atlanta, Georgia instead of in West Palm Beach. That's where I'm located. So I'm going to go and change this to West Palm Beach like this. It says the sunrise is at 708, sunset at 720. Now down below, this is what's very important. You see here it says, sorry, the newest Starlink isn't very visible at your location during the next five days. This might change in the next weeks due to the change in orbits. Now, if we go down a little bit further, now do you see this? This is what I think is so valuable. It gives us a time, a date, and a location. Let me click details here. The location for the next time that we'll be able to see the Starlink parade would be September 20th at my location. It will be in the south at 198 degrees to the northeast at 55 degrees with an elevation of 73 degrees with a max of 80 degrees and an end of 10 degrees. So it gives you all of that information that you need to be able to see that parade of Starlink satellites. And then it gives you more dates, the 22nd, the 23rd, 24th, so on and so forth. But now below this, which is really, really important, especially if you're an astrophotographer or astronomer, it says times with poor visibility. This is so good, guys. This is so good. If we look here, it gives you the exact date and the exact time when the visibility is going to be poor. So, like I said, I think that this is really powerful because if you want to not see the satellites, this will give you some really great information when to set up your tripod to capture those long exposures. But if you want to see the train of Starlink satellites coming by, you can look at this and find out when it will be the best time to see them. So you just constantly check back. It gives you about a week of information. I would like to see it in the future, be able to give you an entire month, but I'm I'm sure the calculations that are going on on the back end of this must be just astronomical. 
Pardon the pun. Anyways, the next one will be the Starlink.sx. So let's get back over to my screen and we'll switch over to that site. So this right here is Starlink.sx. Now Starlink.sx is one of those that I have talked about for a long time. And if we just pull back out a little bit, we're looking at the United States, but we can actually back up and look at the entire world. My area is over here in green. The reason it's green is because I set up this this location is where I am located. So it knows that all of the satellites that are coming by this area are satellites that I will be able to use. Now these little orange dots are the ground stations where the triangles are the pops or point of presence. And as you can see, the green triangle here in Atlanta, Georgia is where I am currently connected to through that pop. Now why I'm not connected through the pop down here in Miami? I don't even want to get into that guys, but that's just the way it is. But what's really cool about this site is you can see all of the satellites that are currently going by. If you see a red satellite like this one, this little red dot, this dot means, or red means that it's not currently in operation. It is out of position. If you see a green dot, these green dots are the version 1.5s. The version 1.5s and the 2.0 minis are the ones that have lasers built in. Whereas these blue satellites are the version 1.0s. These are the older ones, the original ones. They do not have those communication lasers built in. So if we go down into my area, we can see what satellite I'm currently using. I'm using this one, which is a 1.0 right now, but we can see another one coming through right here, which chances are I'm going to pick up on in just a second. Oh, there we go. We ended up, instead of picking up on this one, we ended up picking up on this one. Now this one is coming by pretty quick, so that's probably why it switched over to this one, because this way we're gonna have a lot longer time with this connection between me and this satellite. So this is great information to know how many satellites are near you and what kind of satellites are there. So what's really great about that Starlink.sx is it gives you the information that you've asked me for many, many times in the past. Where is my pop located? Chances are this will tell you where your pop is or where you are going through. Remember, the ground station near you is going to be the ground station that moves the data from you to that pop. And then the pop will move it back to that ground station and then back to you. This is just simply how it works. Now there's one more site that I want to show you and that is SpaceX Starlink's own website and they have changed this recently so let's go check that out real quick so this is what it looks like this is starlink.com forward slash map once again, starlink.com forward slash map. This is where you need to go. And as you can see, there is bright blue area and mid blue and then dark blue. Anything that is dark blue means that it's coming soon. It is currently not available. This mid blue color is available, but there is a waiting list. So if we come down here into the US, for example, the entire West Coast or central US all the way to the West Coast is almost all covered by SpaceX Starlink. That means that you can get a SpaceX Starlink today if you're in any one of these areas that are light. Matter of fact, I'm in Florida. At my location down here, this is all open. Anyone can order a SpaceX Starlink down here, but in North Florida, they can't. So once again, these darker areas are where there is a waiting list. The light areas are where there is no waiting list. Now, besides availability, this map has been updated. If you come over here to where it says availability and click this down arrow, we now see download speed, upload speed, and latency. If we click download speed, do you see how everything changed? We see that it goes from 25 megabits to 150 plus megabits. And it goes from a dark color, once again, which is slow, and the light color is fast. If we pull back, as you can see where the waiting list area is, it is not as fast. The reason being is there's a lot more people, there's more congestion, they need more satellites. But on the West Coast, you can see that not only is there availability, but there's faster speeds. So if we hover over Colorado, it says the download speeds are between 34 and 129 megabits. If we hover over Illinois, it'll say that it's 34 to 114. If we hover over Florida, it says 41 to 130. So this is really great because you can see no matter where you are on the map, 
you know the speeds that you're going to get if you do order SpaceX Starlink or if you can order SpaceX Starlink. If we change this to latency, as you can see, there's different colors or different shades of latency. Down here in Florida, we're between 40 and 50 milliseconds, whereas if you go into Montana, they're between 50 and 65 milliseconds. Once again, the lighter the color, the faster the speed. If we go to Indiana or Illinois, let's say Indiana is between 38 and 50 milliseconds. So once again, this is also great information so that you know what type of latency you're going to get if you use SpaceX Starlink or if you order SpaceX Starlink. Once again, a great site to go check out. So you have Find Starlink, Dot com. You also have Starlink.sx and then you have SpaceX Starlink's own site, which is Starlink.com forward slash map. You could use Find Starlink to track the visibility of the Starlink satellites. You could use Starlink.sx if you want to just know where your pops are, where your ground stations are and where the satellites are rotating around you. And then finally, you can use Starlink's own map if you want to find out availability or what the speed and latency will be if you ordered SpaceX Starlink today. Anyways, I hope you found value in this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. If you have not subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN or if you need to do port forwarding or get a static IP address, address, check out Pure VPN. The nice guys over there gave us a discount. If you use promo code JCHRISTINA at checkout, you will get 15% off your final price. Now they already have 50 to 60% off. This is an additional 50%. So go and check out Pure VPN. You can go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. If you want more Starlink coverage, click on this little link over here. I put together a playlist just for you to check out. There's about 188 videos, I think now. There's a lot. All Starlink helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel has always been about the why. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.